Welcome to Coding with Tom. Today we're going to be supporting the drag and drop feature in our Swift UI app. In iPhone, we're going to add a context menu to add favorites and display them in a batch value. While in iPad, we will make the categories cells draggable and add them to the sidebar. Let's begin by creating the favorite service and use cases that our scenes are going to use. For the service class, there's really nothing new. It just has the source of truth from the favorites, which is all stored in a variable. This variable, we're gonna be caching it on, storing it on device with another URL directory that we did for restaurants. And every time we mutate this variable, we're gonna update the publisher as well as updating our stored model. We are going to be creating three use cases, one to retrieve the favorites publisher, one to add a favorite, and another one to remove a favorite based on its ID.
to support drag and drop, we need to provide two classes that conform to different protocols. One is NS item, item provider writing and NS item provider reading. What this to do is encode and decode the data that the drag and drop interactions are going to use. From these two classes, we're going to be getting the drop restaurant or creating the restaurant that we're dragging. For Street View ID, the only need we need to do to, to add a drag interaction is with the on drag modifier that takes an NS item provider, and for that, we just pass our drag restaurant item. We will be using the restaurant struct in our for each and destination links for that we need it to be hashable and identifiable. Let's prepare our sidebar view model to receive NS item providers. From these items, we're going to be extracting one by one the object that we're loading, which 
will be the restaurant drop item. After the view model is ready for drop, we are not going to be using the on drop modifier. Instead, we are going to be using the on insert method that the for each view has. Now we'll see that in our new favorite section, thanks to the fact that we embedded the text in a for each, we can insert the cell that we're dragging. And now in our favorites list, we can also insert new favorites. What we are missing now is when we tap on a favorite, we need to travel to the detail of that restaurant. I'm going to show you two ways. The first one will be through the categories view. We're going to be taking advantage of the navigation link that we're already using when we tap on one of the cells of the categories view. What we're going to be adding is a tag with the restaurant that's now hashable, so we can do that. And with a new binding variable, which will be the selected restaurant. This binding variable, we will be using it from the sidebar view. So every time we tap on one of the rows of the favorite section, what we're going to be doing is updating our state variable that's now linked to the categories view. Let's see what happens when we run. Now, there's one limitation here that also happened when we implemented the link for this view, and it is that when we trigger this navigation through a navigation link, when the navigation link of that row needs to be visible. So you'll see that we are traveling right now. But if we scroll down and we tap again on Island Grill, we are taken there until we scroll out. Same happens if the cell is collapsed. Since the interaction with the navigation link seems kind of buggy and it's not intuitive at all for the user, we're going to change the implementation by reverting all of this change from the navigation link with the binding variable. And instead, what we're going to do is present a sheet with the restaurant. Now, when we tap on one of the favorites, we display immediately the restaurant, which is what the user is expecting. It's missing a navigation view, but that's something we can easily fix. Another thing that we were missing was returning the color of the selected label to its original black color when dismissing the sheet. Now with these changes, when we dismiss the view, our label returns to its original foreground color. Now to remove the favorite, we just have to use the onDelete modifier from for each. This one passes an index set of the select of the swiped 
uh, so our view model is already ready for uh, to handle this and as we can see it's just swiping and it removes it unfortunately from what i could gather from the web in iphone we cannot drag list items from a list view if we were in a scrollable scroll view we could but apparently it's a bug from list that we cannot drag so instead of using drag what we're going to do is add the favorites through a context menu action our favorite thing has nothing special we will just be displaying a list by listening to the favorites publisher through our view model and like we did in our sidebar, we will be deleting with the on delete modifier from for each. In our tab bar, we just have to keep track of how many favorites the user has. At this point, we cannot preview because our categories view is always expecting an environment object, so we need to always include it when initializing our preview. Swift so UI doesn't have support yet for badge values in the top bar. So for that, what we're gonna do is manually insert a text and then with alignment and offset, we're gonna position it on top of the favorites top bar.
now we have the favorites we can delete them and we can add them through the context menu now the only thing missing is taking the user to the restaurant view As you can see, the hack that we did to add a batch to the tab bar is not perfect. We're going to do our best to make uh, adaptable here to the layout changes, but we're not going to dedicate much time. Hopefully, in the future, Swift UI supports this. That was over today. It was unfortunate that we couldn't support drag and drop in iPhone, but you could see in iPad how easy it was just by adding two modifiers, we could support drag and dropping. We're just in the second release of Swift UI, so it's nice to have this behavior support already. Hope you like it. Bye.